Hi, I'm Ted Pincus. I'm a rheumatologist from Rush University in Chicago. Uh, I'm at ULAR and we have a poster uh, which is called MD Hack as a useful screening tool for fibromyalgia in busy clinical settings. Um, what we use an instrument, it's a questionnaire called the MD Hack, which is derived from the health assessment questionnaire, which we've been using since 1980. It has eight items from the hack about function and two newer ones which we added in the 90s when the patients were doing better uh, on walk two miles and participate in recreation and sports, a query about sleep, anxiety, depression, visual analog scale for pain and global, and in between is a self-report joint count. The back has a symptom checklist, a fatigue scale, questions about exercise and about medical uh, activity. Every patient with every disease fills this out. We found it useful in many diseases including osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and uh, ankylosing spondylitis, uh, polymyalgia rheumatica. And here is its use in identifying people who have tendency to fibromyalgia. We look at here, I think it'd be easier to show here, the pain scale, if the score is greater than six, the self-report joint count, which is scored zero to 48 if it's more than 16, and more than 16 symptoms. And what that identifies with 90% agreement uh, with uh, the uh, criteria, the ACR criteria established by Dr. Wolf and his committee, uh, which are very good, but are not necessarily applied in busy clinical settings. These are actually data from Australia from Dr. Katherine Gibson, who is a very fine clinician and collects the data very carefully. And uh, what it shows, if there's even one of the three criteria, there's 70% agreement, but 90% in clinical medicine is almost as good as it gets. So we think this is a very good, uh, in, in, in our own data at Rush, we found that only 5% of the patients with osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis who have secondary fibromyalgia are identified, but using these criteria we found 20%, which is probably more likely accurate uh, in a busy clinical setting. This is important particularly because many times when patients don't respond to therapy, that we think should be working, it's because of these secondary, what I, I term that distress, not necessarily whether you want to call, sometimes there's fibromyalgia or depression or other diagnoses, but it means it, the symptoms are primarily explained not by inflammation or damage. And I think that may be helpful in busy clinical practice. And I appreciate Dr. Cush asking me to discuss this with you. Thanks a lot.